In today's episode, we have Sarah Cordner with us, and she is going to share her amazing journey from having little hope of her future to becoming the youngest university director in Australian history. You will also get to hear the three key elements that pulled her out of a downturn in her life, expert strategies for creating and designing your online course, and how the recent pandemic has created new opportunities for togetherness around the world. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the Online Course Igniter podcast, where you'll hear from successful course creators and how they were able to turn their passion into a thriving online business empire. Hello, what's up, everyone? Thank you for listening to the show today. I have a super, very special guest and a good friend of mine, Sarah Corner, who is a qualified course creation specialist. And uh, her company is Main Training and is just a superb woman, uh, awesome course creator, great educator. And I'm super excited to have you on the show today. How's it going, Sarah? I am so excited to be here. You know, there's nothing more exciting than when you're working with existing colleagues in the field, you know, Jeremy, you and I have known each other for such a long time, um, you know, well over seven years plus already in the online course creation space. And I love, love, love that we are here together all this time down the line, still sharing each other's journeys, still celebrating each other's wins, still working together as colleagues in the field. And what a different field it is now compared to what it was seven years ago. I mean, my <laughs> gosh, could we ever imagine we'd be sitting here doing podcasts together and, you know, literally tens, hundreds of thousands of students each between us. It's just mind-blowing. Yeah, it is absolutely mind-blowing. We met a long time ago and come from, you know, different backgrounds, different niches, different industries, um, even ways of teaching. I didn't know anything about online courses and education. You come from an educational background and we cross paths. And this is just such a a great time in the world where you can have uh, an online business and meet people from across the world and become friends and share this journey together. And I've watched you grow and have just seen the explosion of your company, your brand, your business, and you as a person. And it's been super exciting to watch. So I am just thrilled to have you on the podcast today. And for anyone who doesn't know who you are, and if you're watching the show my God, you should know who Sarah Corner is. Um, everyone recommends you because you just put out such great material. But for anyone who might not know who you are, why don't you take a moment and just tell us a little bit about uh, your backstory, what you were doing before you got into online business, and then how did you end up where you are today? Yeah, well, um, thank you for the intro and for the, <laughs> for the very kind words there. Um, one thing I do know about online is that um, we can create a community. We can create a village or a city in our own industries. And it's it's really interesting to say, you know, uh, people know each other's names in this field. And anyone who's, I believe, is thinking about going out to create online courses, anyone who's going out to create a brand, to go out and impact people with the knowledge that they have, I really want people to know from your and my stories alone, Jeremy, that you have an absolutely unlimited capacity to do that. It is actually not as hard as you think to be able to make something of yourself, of your name, of your brand, of your business, if you're just courageous enough to go out there. So thank you for saying that. And I just want to make sure that, you know, I did not fall out of some, um, you know, special magical universe to have been able to have the success I've had in my business. In fact, you know, I actually came from a gypsy background. So for those of you who aren't familiar with that, you know, some people always go, what, like my big fat gypsy wedding? <laughs> yeah, pretty much, <laughs> right? In the in the background that I come from, the cultural background, is that it was uh, it's not expected for females to actually even have a job, let alone an education. From the background that I come from, it's a woman's job to raise children and to take care of her husband. And I grew up very much shrouded by that mentality and that expectation. Stepping outside of that expectation was very much frowned upon. <laughs> However, went on to become the first female in my entire extended family to actually receive an education, not only to receive an education, but to then go on to university and complete a degree in education. I have since gone on to currently hold the world record for being the youngest university director and head of campus in Australian history and have students well over 120,000 and 168 countries running a seven-figure education services company with online courses. And 
yeah, I still have to say that and go, <laughs> I'm not quite sure how that happened, but it really came with determination. It came with looking inside and asking myself, what makes me feel good? What makes my heart set on fire? You know, what are the things that I'm doing when I just feel like I want to keep doing this forever? Then time just disappears. And for me, when I look back as a kid, it was always things where I was reading, I was writing, I was translating content, I was passing on information to others. I, I always found ways to teach even when I was a child. And I think when you find that thing that you love, for you, whether it's the actual creation process of creating your courses, your content, whether it's the actual publishing part, you know, the, the joy of putting a, a legacy out there. Maybe for you, it's the actual presentation. You just love to speak. You have a natural gift to share what's in your mind and let it come out of your mouth articulately in a way that people understand and feel motivated. Maybe you have a gift for making people feel better. Maybe you have a gift for making people just feel noticed and that they're not alone. Maybe you simply just have strategies that are straight to the point that help people get somewhere fast. Any one of those things, if any of those things excite you, you can literally take those skills and take yourself to the moon and beyond whilst you're helping other people as well. And I genuinely believe that just tapping into and noticing the things that make me feel good was enough to keep my fire burning, to keep learning, to keep pushing forward and getting where I've got to today. Yeah, that is absolutely amazing. I mean, I got goosebumps just hearing your story, um, knowing that you came from that background where you know you you weren't empowered to 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 go for you know having a job and having education to uh, like you said being the first female director of that campus. It's just absolutely amazing um, how far you've come and continue to grow, continue to learn more, continue to help more people. And I mean, I see it all over the internet. You know, people who um, talk about how much you've helped them, how much you've helped in their course creation journey is is super inspiring and should be inspiring for anyone to know that, like you said, if you have a skill, a passion, something that you truly believe in, you have the capacity to make it happen. And uh, I think you're a living testament of that. And you're only growing more, only getting better. And uh, I just can't wait to see where you go from there. Um, so you were an educator, director. Um, you had your background in education, um, which I think is a really great strong suit to have when you start teaching online courses. Um, I did not have that. I was kind of winging it and figuring it out as I went. Um, I felt kind of like you. I always liked teaching. I always liked helping people. Um, but what was it like in in those early days when you decided that you wanted to bring this online and you wanted to start helping people on the online course platforms? Yeah, I've kind of got that cheesy but very true story where actually my breakthrough online came from an absolute breakdown. Um, <laughs> I was, um, I, I actually moved over to Australia, so you can hear by my accent, I'm actually English, British. Um, I moved over to Australia in early 2012 with nothing but an empty suitcase and a whole load of hope. But I had been running um, ed various, teaching various education programs, mostly personal and professional development type courses um, and train the trainer type programs in corporate. So I had been going into banks and delivering this training. I'd been working um, with uh, mining companies, um, you know, defense forces, writing curriculum and things like that. So I was very, very, uh, I would do, it was very successful behind the scenes, but very, very silently going about local corporates in my local city, helping people, um, you know, in a way that didn't really make a great deal of impact. I liked it. It was good money. <laughs> but there was something missing for me. I kind of felt a little bit held back. I felt a little bit tied down. I had this thing that I couldn't explain that made me feel like, Sarah, this little voice inside me, there's something more. And I couldn't figure <laughs> out what it was. And there was this one particular day, and uh, any of you who've listened to any of my, my podcast interviews or anything before will, will have heard this story, that uh, one day in Western Australia, my business was going great. I had three offices across uh, across Perth. I had 23 full-time employees working in those offices. You know, you'd walk into the building and everyone's got the music on, the coffee machine's blasting, someone's brought their dog in. You know, like it's, <laughs> it's, it was fun. It was like, it was kind of everything I dreamed of, but still couldn't work out what was going wrong. Anyway, um, on the, we basically, Western Australia experienced a massive mining bust and WA, Western Australia, is absolutely heavily dependent on income from mining. Most of my clients were in mining. We had a huge number of projects that we were delivering for, under a fund from the federal government. 
all of our clients <laughs> that were paying us to go and travel out to remote Aboriginal communities to deliver positive training and education programs, all of a sudden lost their funding. It was a complete overnight thing. It happened one Tuesday morning. And I remember getting the first call from one of my clients and they said, Sarah, we're really, really sorry. We've just literally come out of a big conference call with all of our bosses. We have just lost all of our funding. We cannot pay you. And I went, well, what do you mean you can't pay me? <laughs> I'm like, I've got my quarter's bill that I'm about to send through. They're like, we are really sorry. Like, We can probably pay you a month of it, but we, we literally have lost all our funding. Everything is gone. Uh, I've got trainers, 23 of them out. Like, Any of you who have any comprehension of how big Western Australia is, right? there are people out in <laughs> whoop whoop that we say, like whoop whoop means literally in the middle of nowhere with no mm -hmm. phone signal, no sat phones. They literally think they're sitting out there for the next two months, right? <laughs> they are out in these Aboriginal communities having no idea what What's going on behind the scenes so anyway I laugh um but it was I'm just thinking what am I going to do I've got these people to pay the phone rang again it was another client who was also funded by the same federal fund Sarah we can't pay you phone rang again I literally picked up the phone and went I know don't say it like I know I, I know why you're calling me so this happened I had a, a handful of, of calls come through and by the time five o'clock came I knew that I was in severe trouble I literally, in one single day, lost $2.7 million and 23 employees. Oof. I closed the door to my last employee, having said, I'm so sorry, you don't have a job anymore. Your redundancy will be paid. And I sat down on the tile floor in my office and I threw up in the waste paper basket. I just mm. thought, what am I going to do? I'm absolutely, completely and utterly broke. I, I don't know how I'm going to pay off the leases. I've got these office leases. How am I going to pay those out there? I've, I'm in a contract for another year with these things. You know, I've got 23 desktop computers and all of the equipment. I've got coffee machines that are on f lease. I've got staff cars. I've got like 23 redundancies to pay out. I've got I just was sitting there going, and this, and this, and this, how am I going to get out of it? I called my accountant. I said, what do I do? He said, Sarah, you have to go into administration. You have to fold. He said, big businesses can't get out of this, let alone businesses that are as small as yours, right? You know, I'm talking small 23 full-time employees, right? It wasn't small, small. It was a seven-figure company. But he was going, you just can't get out of this. You can't survive this. No one can survive this. And I hung up the phone. I threw up again. And I opened a bottle of wine. I did drink all of it while sobbing. <laughs> right? <laughs> puddle of tears on the floor and self-pity literally strangling me. Um, and I, it was about three o'clock in the morning and I was still sat there just crying. And I thought, you know what? A <laughs> little, bit, little bit of red wine courage came in. <laughs> that true, like, defiant entrepreneurial spirit found at the bottle of a bottom of Shiraz, right? That said to me, do you know what, Sarah? You got yourself into this. You need to get yourself out. You are 100% respons responsible for getting complacent. I had you know, all this money coming in, but they were essentially all funded, albeit through different clients, by the same fund, right? That is a massive, major risk-taking strategy right there. That is poor leadership on my part. I put all my eggs in one basket and there I was, you know, sipping my martinis, driving my nice car, looking at my flash office, thinking I'd made it. And it turned out, you know, my business was built on the whim of one particular fund under one particular government in one tiny state. And I thought, well, dude, no wonder I'm in this situation. I called my accountant the next morning and I said, look, I'm not going into administration. I got myself into this. I need to get myself out of this. Every single part of this, of what's going on right now is completely and utterly my responsibility and the result of my poor leadership. I'm going to learn from this. I'm going to pay back every single cent. Called the tax office, put in a payment plan for all the um, superannuation, retirement fund money, all the staff taxes that had to be paid. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, tax office. And I got <laughs> to work. So I thought, well, ha what am I going to do? I don't have a local business anymore. I no longer can depend on my local economy. I have to do something else. <laughs> so I thought, I know what I'll do. I've just spent years delivering, repeating the same workshops over and over and over again. I was doing leadership training. I was doing train the trainer training. I was just, you know, all these things that I just kept on getting paid to repeat to a different client every single week. So I thought, well, I'll tell you what I do. If I can't drive to my local city and work with these guys anymore, because they've all lost their money. Why don't I just record what I have been teaching face to face for all these years and somehow find a way to take it to somebody that's not in Western Australia? So I did. I um I went out and bought a camera. 
And I just started recording these workshops and I had no idea what I was doing. Right? I knew how to teach. <laughs> I knew my content. That was like lucky. But I had no idea how to look down the lens of a camera. I got really stiff looking at a camera. Like presenting in a classroom is so different. You know, you feed off the energy of the room. You bounce off of the people that are there. You change your pace. You change the way that you're delivering based on who's there and the questions they ask. When you're staring at a camera, I felt like I was genuinely staring down the barrel of a gun. And I remember, like, I even have some of my videos. I mean, any of you are going to cringe to even point you here. But go back and look at some of my first YouTube videos. Like, it, they are <laughs> so embarrassing. But I keep them there to make a point, right? To make a point that nobody falls out of the womb knowing how to present to a camera it just doesn't happen right there's no such thing as when people say oh you're such a natural on camera I'm like no I just absolutely embarrassed myself way more than you have so far right <laughs> you just have to do it and so I've recorded these videos I, I, I chucked them all up on a big fat unedited ugly looking video I think there was some terrible corporate webinar software I was using back then was clunkier than a phone book, right? And I just started emailing all of these clients I'd worked with in the past and said, hey, I know you don't have the budget to afford my daily rate anymore because I was expensive, right? But I've just recorded the workshops that I used to deliver to you for thousands of dollars a day. And actually, you can just have it for a couple of grand if you like. And you can just give it to all your staff. And they were like, what? We're just saving an absolute fortune right here. Like they've gone from paying me like a lot of money to getting a whole course for a couple of grand. So they were like, we'll take it. I was like, great. And there's a tiny little, tiny little bit off of the debt I now have to pay off and all the redundancies I've got to pay. So that went off. <laughs> and I thought, well, this is working. And I just literally got out a digital um, directory. You know, go onto Google and type in, we, we, we're in Australia, so I typed in ASX listed businesses. I, that's our Fortune 500 over here in Australia. And I just literally emailed them all <laughs> and said, I've got this online course. Would you like it? It's way cheaper than paying me by the day. And loads of them took it. I was blown away. I, I literally made six figures in about seven days just emailing this thing out, right? Without even, I didn't even have a sales page. I didn't even know what a sales page was. I didn't have any opt-in thingy majiggies. I did not even know what that was or what it even existed. I was just just sending these guys an email and chucking them a link to this like corporate webinar software that this thing was sat on, right? It was so bad, but people paid for it. Um, and I thought, well, I feel like I'm onto something here. So I kept recording more courses and I, I turfed out. I think I had about 15 or 16 courses that I've been delivering to the corporate. I just chuffed these things out. So basically the money started multiplying because I kept going back to these clients that had bought something off of me. And I was like, hey, would you like another one? <laughs> and they were like, okay, <laughs> no worries. And then a lot of people, particularly in the business world, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, I've been speaking at a lot of these um, business workshops. They said, Sarah, we've seen you kind of, we know what happened. I've been quite open about what was going on. I've been very open about um, you know, the fact that my business was literally facing administration. And they were like, hang on a minute, we've just kind of seen this turnaround. You know, you, I was updating people like, woohoo, I've paid off everyone's redundancies. Yes, right, next step, I've got to pay everyone's superannuation retirement funds. Yay, like tick, tick, tick. How are you doing this, Sarah? And I was like, well, I just made an online course. <laughs> they were like, well, how did you do it? And for me, it came quite naturally because I've been used to teaching. I am a teacher trainer. I am a qualified educator. So I just kind of broke down and went, well, in layman's terms, what is it that I'm doing? And I created the course plan. You know, I, sh I broke down the content. I delivered it more in bits rather than you would deliver it conversationally in a face-to-face -face situation. And, and they were like, oh, we can do that too. I was like, yes, you can. Let me help you. And boom, it just went from there, really. Um, that's when I discovered um, that there were actual learning management systems out there rather than me just dumping this stuff onto these <laughs> webinar platforms and I started investigating these online learning management systems and this is when I came across marketplaces uh, and, and Udemy was obviously one of the biggest marketplaces I came across back then it was still very new and um, there were only 30,000 users I think or something at the time that I joined there are I think over how many is it now 30 million yeah, yeah, like it's, it's up I, there. <laughs> yeah, like we're talking, that's how small Udemy was. And obviously, that's where I met you, Jeremy. You know, there was these tiny little groups of people like you and I who kind of discovered that 
education had actually gone commercial, right? It had gone from being this boring thing that you have to be academically qualified for to actually in a very exciting, sexy, it's become a commercial thing thing. And these little Facebook groups have popped up and I joined them going, all right, I'm just, I'm just moving into this online world. And that's where I met you, Jeremy. You know, we were there <laughs> encouraging each other. Does anyone know how to make it sound like I'm not presenting from a tin of baked beans, right? Does anyone know how this <laughs> camera thing plugs in? Does anyone know how I like chop out the bit where I made a massive mistake and the cat's butt went across the screen? I remember those days where all of us literally got by because there were no online courses on how to do any of this. There were no instructional manuals on how to do this. There were no books on how to do this. There were no podcasts on how to do this. We were literally just helping each other blindly take the blind and we made it work, didn't we? I mean, look where we are now. You know, it kind of happened by accident, but along the way, accidents come, I think, to not only show you that you are supposed to be on a different path. Accidents also come because they are the perfect opportunity for you to learn, grow, connect and and create something magical along the way. And I love it. Yeah, definitely. Um, just amazing. A um, couple of things to unpack here. Um, but first of all, you know, I completely agree with you that that was a great accident. Um, <laughs> you had special skills that you could help with. I had skills. Other friends of ours in these groups were chiming in and, and helping out. And, um, you know, it, it's sad to see uh, some people who are dissuaded by competition in industries. And in this particular industry of course creation, um, I've never felt that from people. I've always felt a tight knit community of good friends and people willing to help out each other. I mean, me and you are in the same space. We're both helping people learn how to create courses. Um, our styles are different. We're different people, but I don't see you as competition. I see you as a good friend of mine and, and someone that I can learn from. And hopefully there's things that you can learn from me. And so I feel like if people have that open mindset um, in their industry and in their business. It will go so much further than thinking of someone as competition or I can't do it because this person's doing it because that that community that you can build can be super powerful. Um, I want to just talk on a couple quick points here. Just things that I noticed in your story that I just wanted to point out to um, the audience that I thought was super important. Um, first of all, that the fact that you took responsibility I think is super important. The fact that all of these things were happening. You were losing this business. You were having to let people go. And at that point, it would be so easy for someone to say, to blame. I blame the government. I blame you know the funding. I blame this. I blame that. And, and that's what we as humans naturally want to do. We want to start pointing the fingers and, and saying, this, this shouldn't be happening to me because of these reasons. But you didn't do that. You took responsibility. You said, this is my leadership. I got me here. I need to get me out of here. And doing that, I think, is um, just really important for anyone in, in their business. Business is going to be hard. You're going to have obstacles. You're going to have roadblocks. You're going to hit those really hard times. Some of them are small mistakes. Some of them are $2.7 million <laughs> uh, you know, errors that happen. Um, but regardless, you got to take the reins. And if you want to be the entrepreneur and you want to be the leader, you got to say, I'm responsible for the things that happen in this business. That was number one. Number two, you took action. Um, you said, I'm not going to sit here and wallow. Uh, maybe I don't know how to use a camera or I don't know how to set up a, a online course platform, but that's not going to stop me. I'm going to take action now. I'm going to use what I have. I'm going to go out and I'm going to just start moving forward. And you took that action. You got the camera. You figured it out. You learned how to use it. You learned how to upload the videos. You learned how to get on the marketplaces. And, and, and you know, I commend you for that. You know, we want to we want to learn and yes you need to learn you get need to hone your skills but you can't get stuck in paralysis by analysis you got to take action you got to move forward um, you can sit there and take all the courses in the world and you know Sarah and I hope you take all of our courses in the world <laughs> but if you're not taking action on those courses they're worthless they don't mean anything we don't want you to just watch videos. We want you to take the videos, learn from them, and then go apply that into your life or in your business. So first was responsibility. Second thing I saw was that you took action. And number three, you started basic. You know, everyone gets so worried about the technology and I got to have the fanciest cameras and the fanciest lighting systems and the best, you know, what marketplace or what platform should I do? You didn't worry about that. You said, 
I'm going to just start emailing people. I'm going to cold call people. I don't have a course platform. I don't have any of this and you know things, but that's not going to stop me. I'm going to hop on email or hop on the phone and start reaching out to these companies, start closing deals and start helping people. And I think that's where, you know, again, people get stuck. They get so worried about the tech and they get so worried about, oh, I, I don't know what platform to choose. Do I choose Thinkific or Kajabi or ClickFunnels? You know, in the end, those are just tools and you need, to, you need to take action and you need to just get started and start moving forward. So I totally commend you on that. You know, what a great meeting, uh, Udemy, the company has been for us to get together, to put our courses up there, to teach people, make some money, help thousands, hundreds of thousands of students now around the world. And we both respectively done that um, on our own businesses. So from there, you get your courses up, you start seeing success. Um, where where did that journey take you after that? And um, if you just want to talk a little bit about, you know, how how were you going about creating your courses? Um, what does some of your course creation strategy look like? How are you picking topics moving from this point forward? Yeah, so really, it's first of all about recognizing that it's more about the content than the production. People are not coming to assess your course or buy your course because like you have a proper like high definition eyeball, right? They're coming to your course because it says it's going to answer a particular question they have. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me, everyone. I don't want to see, we cough and we have mistakes and we trip over our words. This is what happens in the world of online course creation. <laughs> I hope you keep that and don't cut that out, Jeremy. So um, <laughs> I, I really want to tell people that to this day, I'm still creating courses for corporates that are paying me a huge amount of money to do so. I am creating courses for my own platform that I'm getting a lot of students coming through. And, you know, that equals a lot of money over time. And I'm telling you now, I still <laughs> use like a less than $50 set of lighting. I am still using a backdrop, a green screen that I got for less than $50. We do not need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on super duper fancy studios. We do not need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on like over the top fancy editors. People are not going to review the course and go, this course was great because it had such a fancy twinkle at the end. <laughs> They're coming to your course because of what it says. They're going to learn from it and what transformation they're going to get from it. That is the one thing that you need to keep top of your mind when it comes to creating a course. Again, you've mentioned, Jeremy, the platform is just the tool. What people want is not what platform is it on or what colors, whiz bangs, wallops does it have in there? What kind of fancy twinkles does it have at the end? They're coming to your course because they just want the fastest way to learn what they need to learn and the quickest way to get the feelings, the emotions, the lifestyle, whatever it is that they are after. So you can do this absolutely with your phone. You can do it with a cheap, fairly half decent webcam. As long as you've got a big bright window in front of your face so that people can see your face and it doesn't sound like you're presenting from a tin of baked beans, you can get brilliant microphones from your local electronics store, from Amazon, from eBay for less than 20 bucks that are perfectly good quality. Okay. So that's the first thing. You need to start by knowing what questions your audience are asking. And there are tools to go out and do that. We won't go into that today. There are tools to actually go and find what questions people are asking. You know your industry. You know your people. You know what questions they ask you every single day. Start writing them down. I get myself a big Google sheet and I still have it. Whenever I'm scrolling Facebook groups, if I see a question that I can answer, I chuck it in my Google sheet. If I am you know, reading blog posts, if I am seeing comments on threads, I, I, wherever I am, if I see a question I can answer, I chuck it down in my sheet. This is exactly where your course is going to start coming from, the people who it is that you're going to go and serve. So you start with all the things that you can answer. You start with all the questions, all the tips that you can give to people's questions. That becomes the core of your course content. Of course, you're then going to want to organize those into some kind of order that's going to flow sensibly and help people move from one to the other. You can deliver it using your talking head. You don't have to have a fancy studio. You don't have to have green screens. I say to people, the environment that your students in is the environment that you kind of want to come across as being in yourself because it's going to be the most relatable to those people who are listening to you, right? So you, if you are teaching yoga, don't be in a posh video studio with a green backdrop. If you're doing yoga, go and be in your yoga studio or go outside into the park and go under the tree. If you're teaching something about parenting, please don't sit in some posh studio with a suit on and a PowerPoint, right? Are your parenting <laughs> students going to relate to that? Of course they're not. If you're teaching 
parenting, please be in the kids' playroom. Please set up a corner of your lounge where some of the toys are sprinkled across the floor. Let your kids be in it, for goodness sakes. You know, this is you're teaching people who are in that state of being surrounded by <laughs> chaos and kids and handprints on the dog. Why not have that as part of your video? People are going to be like, oh my God, this person gets my life. Of course, if you're teaching more corporate and professional programs, having your dog and your kids around is probably not going to be the right thing, right? For you, it might be that you want to be in a nice, clean environment with a PowerPoint slide or doing a screen share. So think about where are my audience and then therefore, what's the best type of delivery for them? I'm going to give you a heads up video with your face on it is the highest converting, sorry, the highest engaging way to deliver your content. Humans are like like humans. We're tribe animals. We learn best by watching the mouth when it speaks, looking into the eyeballs as as we're engaging and listening to the person that's teaching us. It doesn't mean you have to do talking heads. It doesn't mean that your course is going to be bad if you don't want to have your face on camera. That's okay. I'm just telling you that's the highest engaging rate. You can still just do voice. If you don't want to have your face on your camera, you don't want to be the face of your brand, that's okay as well. As long as you are answering the questions that your people have, you are going to be absolutely fine. So that's all I do. I turn the camera on, usually my webcam or my mobile phone. I answer all the questions that my audience have and I pop them up on a place that they can be accessed by people. For me, that's a learning management system. I find that the learning management systems out there uh, make it really easy for us course creators to use. It makes our life quick and simple. They're designed to be quick and simple and our students can simply go in, access them, pay for them. We don't have to be involved in that process. So that's it. Now, in terms of once you've created the thing, as you probably know, Jeremy, that's where the real work begins. (laughs) (laughs) Now, look, I do have, um, I do have like a 10 step process that I take people through in terms of my own system. You know, and we all have our own way of doing things. And I think this is the most beautiful thing about course creation is that it is a creative process. So the way Jeremy creates a course isn't the same way that I create a course. The way that I create a course isn't the same way as one of our other colleagues in this space create courses. And, and that's what should be really exciting for people is you can follow a structure, you can follow guidelines. And I certainly have put my 10-step course creation system together for people that follow me to use, to use as their guideline, to use as a skeleton, to, to use almost as the the empty branches of a tree that they can then go and decorate, hang, meet, dress, however they want, because you are the course creator, right? So this is why people like myself and Jeremy have our systems that we have found work for us. And we share those so that people can go, okay, I can look at this and I can take from it what's going to work for me. Um, I do give that away in a a free course creation starter kit that um, I know Jeremy will put a link to at the end of this. Um, But also just remember when you're going into this thing and you're thinking, I don't know what I'm doing. (laughs) Jeremy and I have both felt that too. I don't know what I'm doing. It's a creative process. So please don't put too much pressure on yourself to think there is a right or a wrong way to share what you know. Don't think that there is a right or a wrong way or a good way or a bad way to go and help people. You just need to share what's in your heart, what's in your head and do that in the way that comes most naturally, most comfortably to you. That will make you win. Are you struggling to create your first online course? Do you have an idea for a course topic but don't know how to get started? It can be hard trying to figure out everything that goes into course creation. How do you outline your course? How do you set up the technology to create the content? How do you publish it so that you can begin helping others and making money immediately? We know it can be difficult for first-time course creators. That is why we have designed the Start Your First Course Challenge. Our goal is to help you get that online course published within a couple of weeks. That means that you can get your digital product to market without wasting a bunch of time. We will show you how with the easiest methods possible that we have learned and crafted over the years. You'll learn how to choose a topic, outline your course, script what you want to say, and then record the material. After that, you'll discover how to set up the platform and publish it, all with a simple system that's guaranteed to get you results fast. Beat your procrastination by taking action today. Go to startyourfirstcourse.com now to sign up. That's startyourfirstcourse.com. See you in the challenge. I know from personal experience interviewing dozens of people on this podcast now that 
everyone goes about their course creation process differently. Um, I, I've had people who were educators, people who weren't educators, people who started with live classrooms, people who went straight into online courses. We've had every industry under the sun on this podcast. And you you just learn what fits your style and what fits you. And I love that you say it's a creative process because it really is. It's a fine mix of um, a little bit of analytical where you're you're learning technology and you're learning how to do some of these things that you have to do to get the course online but there's a lot of art to this and as it being art it's malleable you can make it how you want it to be you can make it fun you can make it interesting you can make it serious you can add gamification to it whatever you would like to do and so I'm, I'm glad that you say that because I don't think enough people um, really harp on that that point and I think that it is important that um, as you begin creating, you're going to find your style and your audience is going to resonate with you because of who you are and the information that you're providing. Some people are going to love Sarah. Some people aren't going to find Sarah that great. Some people are going to love me and they're not going to find me that great. It's so true. And that's why there's no competition. You've touched on this already. And this is so true for us because I say to people all the time, people are like, oh my gosh, Sarah, but there are so many other people teaching what I want to teach. There are so many (laughs) other courses and what I want to create a course and there's no space for me right and then they sit there feeling so <laughs> I'm like oh my goodness right Jeremy and I are a perfect example we teach the same thing right now even if Jeremy and I followed the exact same script if we were given an identical script to read if we would dress the same right if I sent Jezza him a lipstick and he could put that on and we tried to <laughs> we had the same landing pages and the same copy we would still attract completely different people mm-hmm. there is no such thing as competition here because we are different people we are going to attract different people that we will never be competing for because some people, you know, want to work with that style, that personality. Some people look at my videos or listen to me and my, go, my God, do you even breathe between your words? Like, how annoying. <laughs> maybe they, you know, maybe I remind them of some nasty person that smelt funny at school, right? <laughs> Once, who knows? But we all can, we are all completely and utterly unique. Not only are we only completely and utterly unique, meaning there is no sense of competition, but people forget that over half of the world doesn't even have the internet yet, right? We are Mm. literally at the bottom of this bell curve. This bell curve hasn't even started belling yet, right? We are (laughs) so at the forefront of this. People, we are not saturated. We are not behind. We are the first ever generation ever, ever, ever in history to be and do online learning. So (laughs) believe me when I say with more than 7 billion people on planet Earth, half of which who don't even have access to the internet yet, this industry has not even yet begun. So please don't feel like you're behind. Jump in now. We are the godfathers, the grandmothers, whatever word you want to use of this industry, of this learning revolution. And we are so lucky. And if you don't trust yourself, give yourself some courage, give yourself a pat on the back, have a little bit of gritted teeth and determination and go out there to share, right? You are literally just putting an opportunity in the bin because this is here for us as the first ones ever to make our mark, to leave a legacy. Every single person behind us that's younger than us, they are coming after and they're going to be looking up to us to the lessons that we are learning as we're doing this and they're going to look up to us um, as to how they are then going to go and create their own versions of what we're doing too this is a magical time and it's absolutely bursting with opportunity please take it that's amazing very very great stuff sarah i I appreciate that Um, Really great points. I can't say it any better. Um, And I know that we're getting close to the time and I don't want to hold you up too long. Um, You've been amazing. And I just love, you know, hearing you talk and talk about these different aspects of course creation and entrepreneurship and mindset and helping those out there. And I hope that a lot of people are are really listening and paying attention because you're dropping so much value in this episode. And I really appreciate that. Um, One last topic that I wanted to hit on real quick before we wrap up is you mentioned that you were even starting to go back to some live events. And you mentioned that um, you're, you're kind of getting back to your roots a little bit. So if you could just let me know and let the audience know, um, what does that look like now? 
Yeah, well, look, over the, uh, since COVID started, I think we, one thing we've all definitely experienced is change and pivot and adjusting and moving paths and twisting and reevaluating, right? And this has been absolutely huge. Uh, interestingly, I was already completely and utterly solidly online when COVID hit. So for me, um, the only thing that was impacted was my maternity leave. I had an eight day old baby when COVID <laughs> came along. So that was the maternity out the window. Um, uh, yeah, actually, but my business and most people who I know who have online online businesses um, grew quite dramatically. So I've been quite fortunate. And obviously, my thoughts, my prayers, and everything goes out to those who haven't had such a positive experience through this terrible time. But um, we are in a situation now where we have come back to something that's so old, it's new again. Something that's like, so boring is like sexy again. I'm finding we're very fortunate where I live in Western Australia. Um, we've managed to so far um, avoid uh, significant um, lockdowns or, and restrictions with, with COVID. So what we have found is that people are extremely hungry and desperate. And I'm going to use that word intentionally for togetherness, physical togetherness. People are paying twice as much for face-to-face workshops now than they were two years ago, because we have become so fatigued and isolated with everything moving online that people are seeing face-to-face opportunities and are jumping on them and paying significantly. Recently, I I traveled up to the city um, and a friend of mine, a client of mine actually was delivering a workshop. And I just went along to go and watch her and see how she's doing, give her some tips and some feedback from the back of the room. And she had 60 women in this workshop. Each of those women had paid $200 each to be in that workshop. And every single one of them said, I know I could have done this online for $10. I know I could have got this exact same content in an online course for $10, $15, $20. I was happy to pay $200 and travel over an hour to get here because I am desperate to just meet people, network, be in a room full of people, be able to put up my hand and ask a question, (laughs) to have the teacher come over to me and show me how to do something on my own on my own phone. And she'd made $12,000 for a day's work. (laughs) You know, who doesn't want that? And for me, you know, I even came out of that workshop just feeling so ridiculously energized and excited by being physically surrounded by other people who are just as ambitious, excited, and, you know, doing the same thing as you. I flew home (laughs) in the car. I promise I drove at the speed limit. And I contacted my (laughs) PA, Sybil, and I said, Sybil, Sybil, Sybil. I was like, Book, book a flight, darling. <laughs> You're coming down to Perth. <laughs> we are going to book workshops because I just felt so alive by it. And so did the people there that it reminded me just how much the power of, uh, of physical presence, um, how much the world needs that right now. So although we are definitely in a place where we're strategizing to massively expand online, this is uh, obviously, like I've just said to you, this is just the beginning. And anyone who's not making big plans right now is just literally putting an opportunity in the bin. We need to also see that COVID has created another opportunity for creating togetherness, creating communion and creating space. Um, if you can, if that's possible, to um, to help people in a new form of delivery format that is old, but is definitely, definitely sexy again. That's awesome. I love that so much. I want to do that. Um, I remember watching, because uh, you you did this on, I think, maybe a smaller scale back in the day, because I remember a couple years ago, I don't know how long it is now, but you were doing little workshops. Weren't you having people come in and you were helping them record their course and doing things like that? And I remember you posting those online and being like, oh, that's so awesome. I want to do that. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. And yeah, this is the cool thing that anyone can do, no matter what you're teaching, um, is, you know, how could you bring a a face to face element of that? And so, you know, I created my course creation boot camps where I'd hire a big mansion, I'd bring my whole film crew, all of my editing team, and people would literally walk away after a week with their whole online course filmed, edited, uploaded onto their own online school with sales being made before they walked out the door. You know, that's your high ticket thing. What would be your own high ticket equivalent of that? Can you create some kind of immersion program or retreat that you may do when? And when, because it's not if, when we will go back to, you know, being allowed out of our houses again at some point, (laughs) when that happens, what would be your equivalent of a retreat or an immersion program? The other flip side of it is another service I um, I was offering until COVID hit was, um, um, you know, literally come to my house for a day. And people were paying a lot of money to come to my personal home, sitting with me, we'd create their course plan in the day, we'd set up their online school together. Uh, They would then jump in my studio, use my equipment to film their course. And at the end of the day, I'd take them out for dinner, we'd 
have a glass of wine and sometimes they'd stay the night. You know, we'd have a good old chin wag about our plans and our goals and get excited. You know, that was getting solidly booked out all of the time. And there is still space for that. So what would be the equivalent of that for you guys listening? You know, every single one of us have something that we could sit down with one of our customers and give them that one-on-one, let's get it done kind of experience. You do have that. Please think that just because you're creating an online business, again, we talk about tools, vehicles, mechanisms, online, using this camera, using this webcam, using this microphone, using the lights that are all around me while I'm talking right now. These are just tools to be able to share with people all of the different ways that I can help them. You know, but don't limit yourself to just one. You can create self-study online courses. You can create an online coaching program. You can create one day ex- done for you experiences or done with you experiences. You can create retreats and immersion programs. You can do done for you services. All of these are opportunities that you can be using to help your people grow to the next step and you know whilst you grow at exactly the same time. Yeah, that's awesome. And not only that, but you're diversifying your revenue streams. And, you know, if, if something happens, uh, another COVID happens or uh, online goes down, then you have the offline stuff and vice versa. Or another funding changes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's really cool. Well, I'm going to start looking out for your retreats. I might have to make a trip over to Australia and, and go to one of these workshops. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Sarah, it's been awesome. So awesome having you on the show. I'm so glad that you uh, agreed to come on and share your time with us today. Um, I know people are going to be super excited to learn more from you, find out more about you. Um, where can people go online to get that 10-step process or to learn more about what you're doing today? Yeah, thank you so much, Joan, for the opportunity to share and um, for us all to follow each other. And obviously, don't forget to also jump in to Jeremy's programs and giveaways too. I do have a free course creation starter kit um, that has my personal 10-step strategy for creating an online course. And it's got a five-day Create Your Course Outline Challenge included in there for free as well. That's at sarahcordina.com forward slash starter kit. That's completely free of charge. So if you want to have a little sneaky peek at the way I do it, um, that's That's what you will find in there, full tutorial videos and downloads for you to get through. Perfect. Well, I will make sure that I link that and every other uh, social media platform and, and your website and all those links, I'll put them in the show notes. So just stay tuned to the end of the show and I'll have the link for that where you can uh, go to the website and find all those links and go straight to her site and start um, just devouring all this wonderful information that she has for everyone. Sarah, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I appreciate you. I appreciate everything that you're doing. And um, I love our friendship and how far that we've grown together. And I only hope the most success for you in the future. My absolute pleasure. And I can't wait for us to keep on strategizing behind the scenes and see where we take it to the next level. Because do you know what? Our goals are just going to keep growing. Jeremy, thank you for having me today. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to catch up with you again soon. Thanks so much for joining us today, Sarah. You can find out more about her and her business by visiting sarahcordner.com. Or you can get the show notes of this episode along with links and resources by visiting onlinecourseigniter.com forward slash 64. Don't forget to make human interactions and build friendships online. They can last a lifetime. Thank you for tuning in to the Online Course Igniter podcast. Make sure you subscribe wherever you're listening so that you don't miss an episode. If you would like to learn more marketing strategies and how to sell your online course, then also check out our free community where we share tips, tricks, and tutorials at onlinecourseigniter.com forward slash community.